Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Zion Church. Welcome to worship. Uh, thank you all so much for taking time to be here on a beautiful, wonderful uh, Sunday morning. Uh, for those of you that are joining us from home and are looking at us through uh, your TV screens or computer screens or phones or iPads, thank you uh, for joining us today as well. It's an honor uh, to be able to worship with you today. All kinds of God sightings that have been coming up on our board out in the foyer, and uh, I want to thank you all for for continuing to add to that board and continuing to be, to think about the ways in which God continues to be present in your life. It was a big part of our confirmation class this morning when we were talking about how do you experience God and where do you see God and, and what is the purpose of worship. And we talked a lot about how much time we spend in worship. You're here for about an hour, one hour. Some of you want me to go 45 minutes. I, I tried to give you somewhere between 45 and an hour. And then you're gone. Six days, all that time, gone. And one of the reasons we talk about what we do when we end service, when we say worship has ended, let our service begin, you got all that time to serve, to be a servant leader, to be a faithful follower, to do all of those wonderful things, and to experience God's presence in your lives, to come back to worship, on Sunday morning for one hour, 45 minutes to an hour, to give thanks. To give thanks for all that you've received, for all that you've experienced, regardless of what it is, and that we have another opportunity to join together. Those God sightings um, point to that. There's a lot of cans up here. Unfortunately, we did not reach the thousand can goal. Now, there was a misunderstanding because Irma was counting boxes and that. I said cans. So... We came up with 999 cans. We'll get one out of the window. We do have an actual count, though, um, and that actual count is an incredible number, and it's attributed to all of you and uh, your willingness to take time to get a can, to buy some cans, to bring in cans, to donate, to come by during the week. I got a funny story after this number I'll share with you, but... What is our number, Miss Irma? 1,795 cans, okay? So you, you made your goal. You made your goal. And you're going to be able to experience something today that I hope you'll remember and you might put on the board as a God sighting. Um, and that'll take place during children's time because I told the kids that they would be able to participate in giving me a haircut. And so that's going to be a part of our children's time. Uh, yesterday afternoon, I had an opportunity to be here with the Vogels, and they had a private baptism um, for their son, Drew. And I came over early uh, to get stuff set up, to put water in the baptismal font, all those types of things, to make sure things were set in the sanctuary. And I hadn't been in here since last Sunday. And I came in those doors. <laughs> And I walked in, and I, was, I looked, and I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> and I, I put the baptismal font here, and when Mariah and Kyle came uh, in, I said, before you go in, I just want you to know that I hope you're okay with what the sanctuary is going to look like for your baptism. And they said, well, what do you mean? And I said, there's a lot more cans in here than I anticipated. And so they took a lot of photos right here with cans. Uh, that they cropped and uh, changed and all that kind of stuff. They were, they were great with it. Thank you all for everything that uh, you've done to help make this possible. You have some spiritual gift cards or lean on me cards, we're calling them, um, in your church pews. If there's a way in which you would like to be included in some of the ways that we might seek to help others within our congregation and community, that little card is, is in your church pew. And if you don't have one, uh, please uh, let me know. We'll make sure some more get, get put out there. Um, there's been a lot of these handed in as well, um, and a lot of great ways in which you have agreed uh, to, to be a part of helping the congregation. We're going to uh, begin an a, a online, in-person Bible study class um, starting next Sunday, and Nancy and Steve are going to be a big part of that. Nancy's going to make an announcement on exactly how that will happen, and, um, and how you can tune in, even if you can't be here on Sundays. Good morning. Um, 
On Sunday mornings, um, we've been working on recruiting people to come to the Sunday school class, and we had an idea. What if we made that available via Zoom for anyone who wasn't able to get here by 9 o'clock, or if you're worshiping at home and you want to um, join the Bible study at 9 o'clock. We are currently doing um, a study of world religions, and we've been doing Hinduism and Buddhism, and next week we're going to move west and have a look at um, Islam, the Muslim religion, uh, Judaism and Christianity and all of that. Um, and then later on, we're going to move into a study of images of God in the Old Testament. And then Steve's going to work on um, portraits of Jesus in the New Testament. So a lot of variety of subjects that we're going to be looking at. So if you want to join in next Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, don't go to the church website, go to Zoom. Uh, hit the join a meeting button, wherever that will be on your computer, and then put in the church phone number as the meeting ID, and be sure to include the area code, and you can join us. Um, I will monitor, um, so you can um, choose to be um, um, in person, if you like, or you can choose to have a blank screen, but you will see on your computer all of the slides that Steve will work through as we finish up this uh, round of world religions. Um, you can participate if you like, or you can just silently listen if you'd like as well. So if you have any more questions, let us know. And um, I've put my phone number in the church newsletter. If you try to log on next week and are having trouble, um, text me or call me and I'll walk you through it. So any questions? All right, hope to see you there. Good job. I think it's, it's gonna be a, a great way to be included. And I, and I wanna extend an invitation to all of you who join us online. And, and there are a number of you, I don't know if you look at some of those statistics uh, each week uh, in, in our church newsletter, I'm surprised at the number of people. It varies greatly. Somewhere between 20 to 60 people or so view us throughout the week. Um, if you're, I know my brother um, right now is online in Omaha. Um, if any of you, I know, I know sometimes some coaches, because they'll give me a hard time at coaching practice um, about what something I did on Sunday. Or Remember several weeks ago when I said a bunch of white people trying to keep rhythm? <laughs> when I got to practice that week, one of the coaches said to me, are you still going to work on that rhythm thing with your church? Or... And I said, yeah, we're going we're gonna to do the best we can. We're going to get it by Christmas. Um, so anybody can join. Um, you don't have to be a member of the congregation. If you know somebody that uh, would, would enjoy or uh, likes to be a part of Bible studies like this and uh, they would like to view online, feel free to, to share that information um, how, however you, you would like to do that. It would be very helpful. Today from 4 to 6, we're going to gather across the street for our Trunk or Treat event. Um, we'd, we'd love to have you join us. Bring a car if you want to. Decorate your car if you want to. Uh, the main thing is uh, it's going to be a wonderful afternoon. The weather's going to be great. We'd just love to have you present. If you have children, grandchildren, neighbors that have children, just come on out and enjoy an afternoon with us. A great playground. I understand there's going to be some petting animals available. Uh, there's going to be some, some stuff uh, there. We're going to have some... Um, I don't know, finger hot dogs uh, for, for you to enjoy. I hope you um, enjoy the creativeness that is going into these hot dogs that we're going to serve. Just come out and, and, and have a good time with us and stay for as long as you want. I know Nicole's not here today, um, but N N Nicole Hoffman, I, I, I want to read to you the uh, award that uh, she received um, this week. Um, and I, I wanted to share that with the congregation for sure. So, Nicole, if you see this later, if you're watching now, uh, we honor you today uh, for your accomplishments. She's basically a CSI. She's a forensic um, detective is basically what she does. And she received this award for the SANE training program, and it is this. The inaugural SANE training team um, offers congratulations for winning the Brian Turpin Award. There were only five of us that were able to attend, and I was able to get a picture of the three of us, but there are many more that are part of this special team. For about 10 years, we've developed a training program, and this is what SANE stands for, for sexual assault nurse examiners that require uh, collaboration of law enforcement, SANE nurses, victims, advocates, ISP forensic laboratory, prosecutors, 
and USI partners and other community resources. Nurses not only come from Indiana to take this course, but we also get nurses from other states as well. Congratulations to you, Nicole, and everything that you do for the community and all the work that you do um, in, in your chosen field. Uh, we, we honor you and uh, thank you uh, for what, what you've done. Our prelude this morning is uh, shared by Miss Carol Jo. Um, for those of you that um, are aware of uh, some of the journey that Carol and Jim are are striving through and, and working through, um, it, it, is, it, it is an honor and it's a testament to your faith and your strength that uh, you still come and you sit in that chair, I don't know, bench, chair, well you get a chair, we can get you one if you want to go off the bench, we can do that, um, that you come and share music with us. And so um, I look forward to hearing um, your prelude this morning. Choir.
I need to ask if we're playing live music or using a CD. So thank you, Sandy. I take most of what I said about you back and put it all over here to Sandy now. It's a team, I know, I know. Let's pray together, shall we? Would you please stand um, as you are able and we'll join together in our opening prayer. God of glory, we thank you for this season of abundance. We praise you for the gifts of this earth and our lives. We gather today and dedicate again our lives to your service. Bless this gathering and each of our souls to your service, that we may glorify you and reflect your love in all that we say and in all that we do. Amen. Let's sing. Please be seated, children, superheroes who are in the building. Oh, there we go. Look at you. They got you all outside. I wonder where all the kids were. <laughs> My goodness, what do you got there? Pastor Jeff, you're... Very nice. Thank you very much. It says... You're our super duper hero, and we love you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. You got some cards? You got all these cards, too? All right. You got one over there? Thank you very much. Come on up. There are a lot of you that came today for this pastor appreciation. I bet you didn't come for any other reason. Come on up. Come on up. Make your way in here. Make your way in here. Thank you. This is very nice of you all. Good job. Thank you, Gracie. What you got? Look at this one. A double heart? Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Look at all those. This one has a bow on it. I'll have to open it later. All right. Okay. I'll sneak around this way. How would that be? Yeah, that's right. All right. We need you up here. Yeah, I'm right here. <laughs> Come on, honey. Well, I'm right here. I'm, I'm pretty close. <laughs> what you got? Well, you know, it's past appreciation month. Yeah. It's past appreciation month, and the kids have gotten everything for you. And you know you got them capes last year or some time ago, 
And uh, Kay Austin made all these capes for the boys and girls. So we. Oh, have that's what those are. All right. You, for you took yours off? You didn't want it. <laughs> anyway, we have one for you, too. You got one for me, too? Yes. You say extra big? Okay. All right. There we go. Looks pretty good. Thank you. Turn around. All right. Somebody anonymous wanted to give this to you. Somebody anonymous. It's a great big whistle. <laughs> if anybody's falling asleep from now on, I'm going to get this out from the <laughs> JJ personal foul. And on behalf of the congregation and the church council, we want to give you that. The congregation and church council. Church council, and you are our super duper hero. Oh, a little uh, Superman figurine. Thank you. And there's a card in there also. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Oh. Woo! Look at that. There you go. Throw them up. Yeah. I don't know who did that. I saw it. I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. All right. Now, today is a, a special day for a number of reasons, right? You all have worked really hard to make something happen, didn't you? And, and, and what was that? It was choking me. Okay? It, was on my, it was on my microphone, so that's why I took it off. You worked really hard. I know. I'll, I'll put it back on. You worked really hard to make something happen. What did you work to help make happen? All of this food, right? Irma, have we ever collected this much food before? You don't I think that we think this is a record, and so you are all record setter super heroes. You've never collected this much food before, so great job. And as a result of collecting this much food, I promised you'd be able to be a part of something. Do you remember what that was? Do you remember what it was? No, it means you all are required to help load this. That's, did you misunderstand me? No? Okay. So this is what we're going to do. <laughs> All right. Okay. I did implore the assistance of a professional. Um, I just need to get a chair. The professional that's helping us with this process, um, her name is Nancy Lewis. I'm going to use this chair to sit in. This is going to be fun, right? Over here, there's an elect there's a extension cord for you. Let her in there. What? Shut your mouths. <laughs> what? <laughs> you like it just how I am. Okay. It's not going to be bald, bald, but you're going to be really short. So now, remember, this is a part of promising something and then following through, and, and, uh, and I'm willing to do that because of all your hard work. So Nancy, are you ready? Oh, you even brought a little apron for me? A cape? Okay. Here we go. 
All right. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Who's going to help Nancy first? One of the other things that I want to mention to the congregation is, when you're thinking about doing something, think it through more than I did. <laughs> just, just some advice. Okay. Are you ready? So Gabby's gonna start. Here we go. Somebody coached them. There's been coaching going on here. All right. Go up like that, okay? Can you do that? Here, I'll help you. Come on. Woo! Okay. Let's start on this end, okay? Is it shorter? Yeah. Is it? Are you sure? I did. I don't like the way Nancy's laughing with each. I should keep my hair. Should I stop right now? Who is this? Is this right? Oh, it's, I know who it is now. Uh, yeah, you can do it. Yeah, I'm just going to go. Do oh, yeah. oh. There you go. Oh, oh my goodness. It's going to be okay. It really, it'll grow back. It'll be fine. Thank you. I'm going to make your hair in you. You need to get this part. Nancy. Nancy, you need to get this next. Oh, there's Eliza. Eliza, David. David, can't follow that. I thought it was. Uh, you should get this part because it's a little fuzzy. We don't little fuzzy. Are you right? We missed the spot. Well, let's put it in this hand. I need to get that. We need to get that. Yeah. Okay, you ready? We should put a microphone on that clipper. The only part I like is the little bottom that I want to show you. Yes! Oh, my hair off. Wiping the hair off. Wiping the hair off. Are you okay that this is happening? Yeah. Are you sure? No, I'm not. I'm not at all. I had it. I'm not okay that this is happening. I'm trying to get all the other stuff off it. I'm not happy that it needs a thousand. At least it won't work. How many we got here? Let's go. Let's go. That would be 200. What about this piece? We need to okay, do we'll, this piece. Okay, we'll get there. Sorry, I just asked. Only if it was right up here. 
All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know. When, when are we going to get to the front? In a minute. Yes. Oh, how does it look on the back? How does it look on the back? Hey, Greg, can we go to the scripture reading? I'll get that out of the way while I'm sitting there. I know. I will. <laughs> Not that much hair. It's a bald cut, y'all. It's a bald cut. Yep. Careful, don't cut his ear. My person never came my ear. He almost cut half of my ear. Really? <laughs> Who here's had their hair cut by Nancy? Anybody raise your hand? Yeah, she's like when like when she's ready to get to an area, she just Palms your head and like. <laughs> okay. Here's what you've been waiting for. Should I leave it? Should I? What do you think of that? <laughs> I can. Oh, I think it's an. I think it's. Wait, can I see? Can I see? Scare! What do you think? I could come to trunk or treat like. Okay, Nancy, take some off there, Nancy. Oh, that's right. Can I have a, can I have a lady? Here we go. Nancy, can I do it? Okay, Gabby. I think I got this. Does it look pretty good? Yeah. Can we take it from here? Wait a minute, yeah, I'll take some I, off. You all know that I'm not seeing what you're seeing, so I have no <laughs> idea. I'd appreciate a photo. <laughs> okay. I like it. It's Start fuzzy. Right this is the worst day of your life? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Okay. Who's next? Who ever just step up? That's pretty short. <laughs> but it's fuzzy. So where are you? Where are you? <laughs> Can I use your hat, Richard? I didn't feel like the rest of my head was going to be that white, and then I got tan. Can I see it? Can I see it? <laughs> this little piece right here. <laughs> the unicorn card, y'all. Okay, that's good. <laughs> what do you think? Does it look pretty good? You're next. Oh. No. No, we each get Okay. No, she doesn't want to do it. Okay. Why don't Why don't you? You can. Don't shave your sister's hair. Yeah, don't shave me. I would rather not have to shave. Sorry, let me get down. All right. Why don't Why don't you finish it, Nancy? <laughs> oh, they're doing a good job. <laughs> Say goodbye. Okay. Say yeah. goodbye. Yeah. You want some of my hair? Here, take my hair. Your, your hair. Okay. 
for, for sparring. <laughs> this is what I'm giving for trunk or treat, pieces of my hair. Four o'clock today. I love it. <laughs> I'm much sweatier than I thought I was going to be. I must have. Maybe because you were nervous. You should look after. You should look at a meal after this. Sorry. I know what you're all thinking. I can see it in your eyes. Two words. Two words I see coming back at me. Dead sexy. What do you think, Nancy? Okay, it's, I think it's good. It's good? How's it look, everybody? It look good? Oh, I got him. Wow. You're going to what? I'm going to give you my hat. You're going to give me your hat next Sunday? This is the best children's time ever. Here you get a head rub. All right. Here you go. Kelly, you have your phone? Can we do a photo? We good? I'm gonna, we good, Nancy? Yeah. All right. All right, let's do this. Oh, my goodness. You can take that out of here. here. Let's move that out. Or let's move it back. Can you hold that for me? Yeah, no problem. All right, there you go. Hey, let's, let's have a photo together, okay, everybody? You can come here. You can come here with me. Come here with me. You can sit here with me. Come here. Come right in here, no, big man. I'm brushing his hair in the picture. All right, you can come around here too. Come right in there. I'm barely in the picture. <laughs> it'll be back. Next week it'll all be grown back. Who's touching my hair? Who's playing Gabby? with my hair? <laughs> I, I like that you just see me. There we go. There we go. Smile. Say, everybody say haircuts. Haircuts. All right, get out of here. Get yourself. All right. Thank you, everyone. Yep, grab those. You like the hair?
Oh boy. A lot of messages here. Mom and, uh, Mom and I's view of church this morning were on a phone. Silas and I wish we were there to give him a backward mohawk. Michelle Hinheisen you, Hinheisen, you might need a sock hat for a while until it grows out when it's uh, too cold. Carl Barkett, welcome to my world. <laughs> for those of you that are football fans, my brother in Omaha, I didn't know Ben Roethlisberger was a pastor now. My goodness. When I did my bet with the Cub Scouts in 2019, I did no guard on the Clipper. Sean Hanheisen, is that a challenge? Is that a challenge? Are you saying this isn't adequate? My goodness. Oh. Back to business, right? How about Bartimaeus? Um, it wasn't that he didn't have hair, he just he couldn't see. And so today's message focuses upon him and uh, the story. It's breezy up here. And the story of uh, his encounter with Jesus. And it goes like this. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho, and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting on the roadside. When he heard that Jesus, uh, that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. And so he threw off his cloak, he sprang up, and he came to Jesus. And then he said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. And Jesus said to, to him, Go, your faith has made you well. And immediately... He regained his sight, and he followed them on their way. This is the basis for our, uh, our reflections today. And um, some of what I wanted to focus on um, had a lot to do with Bartimaeus' story and what he was about and, and the experience that he had, and not just blindness, but the blindness that can come from our faith and us sometimes, things that we're blind to. I was about midway through my second or third grade year when I began to notice that I had trouble seeing, couldn't see very well. Didn't want to say anything right. I uh, mean a trip to the eye doctor. Um, I kept quiet. I didn't want to say anything. I moved closer to the front of the room so I could see the board. I began having trouble seeing on my spelling tests. I wasn't able to copy words from the board that well. And so I needed to find a way to correct that. Glasses, it turns out to be, aren't really that bad. Uh, actually, you can look kind of cute when you're in glasses. What happens in second or third grade, though, is um, people make fun of you, and that's what made it kind of hard. Since that time of having glasses, I have been without glasses because I had a LASIK procedure about 10 years ago, and that lasts about that long, and I decided I would just wear glasses again, and so I'm back in glasses. Our character for today, Bartimaeus, had no such help for his seeing or difficulties. He had no eye doctors, no glasses, just the kindness of strangers to help him on his way. We don't know much about this character. We really don't. Besides the fact that he begged on the side of the road. That was it. It's about all we know. Doesn't show up much more. The gospel writer dropped a hint that he might not have always been blind, which is pretty challenging in itself. Can you imagine being able to see, having any other freedom, being able to see, being able to walk, being able to talk, being able to smell, being able to hear, being able to taste any of those senses being removed from you once you had them, he maybe could see again, but he once could have also seen, and in the middle of that, couldn't. So there he sat. His name literally means Timaeus, bar Timaeus, the honored one. Yet his place wasn't one of much honor. I imagine he was just one of the many beggars along the streets of Jericho. 
So on that day, when Jesus set off, and just kind of a little bit of a map of the area in which Jesus did his ministry, just such a, a fairly small area, he set off from Jericho toward Jerusalem, and the crowd was along the road, buzzing with news in his presence. Bartimaeus apparently heard that Jesus was approaching, and we learn right away that he was not able to hold his tongue, and he called out, Son of David, have mercy on me. Inner strength. What would it take someone like him on the side of the road who hundreds, maybe thousands of people had walked by year after year after year after year, generation after generation after generation, and not said a thing? I have a lot of respect for this person. I hope you do too. He has a lot of inner strength and fortitude to just make it through everything that he's had to endure. And he had one chance, and it was one chance only. It was now or never. And so he did it. He spoke up, and he said what he felt he needed to say, Jesus, have mercy on me. And like most, he was told to be quiet at first. And then they called him to Jesus. And Scripture says he sprang up and he ran to Jesus. I don't know how he knew where he was running. He was blind, right? I don't know how, how, how he knew which direction to go. He was blind. He couldn't see. Sometimes we also run toward things that we don't necessarily have a complete picture of. We have dreams. We have hopes. We have aspirations. We have wishes for our children, like our parents had wishes for us. And we move toward them not knowing. I told you the story long ago when I sat in that locker room at the University of Nebraska with Roger Fitzke, and we didn't know what we had gotten ourselves into. Have you ever been in that place? Have you ever been in a situation that you didn't know what you were getting into until you were in it? Blind faith. I think it's going to be okay. I think I can do it. I think I can endure it. I think I can help it. I think I can accomplish it. I'm not sure, though. Blind faith sometimes takes us to places that we might not have been able to imagine the blessings that would occur until we got there. But there's also things that blind our faith that I want to mention today before we conclude. There are things that blind our faith, that take away the beauty of everything around us. Vengeance. Anger. Depression. Unhappiness. Feeling as if life just hasn't been fair to you. Change the perspective of, this world is a wonderful place. This world is an incredible place. I can't wait for tomorrow. And if you carry all of that stuff with you, and you just can't let it go, and you just can't get past it, and you just can't understand someone for who they are, but you feel like it's a direct reflection on you, it can make everything else in our lives feel like it's just gloomy and bleak. Blind faith and having our faith blinded are two different things, but two powerful forces that play against one another. Bartimaeus's faith wasn't blinded. He was blind. But his faith and his optimism and his willingness to accept and to stay in the game and to work hard and to stay after it and to not give up and to remain dedicated continued. And he succeeded. We've done that a number of times here together. This is a small example. I know this looks like a lot of food in our sanctuary, but this food will probably be all gone this week. You can look at it one of two ways. You can say, well, big deal. It lasted one week. Or you can look at it like, well, for one week, the cupboards may have been full, 
and you did it just because you wanted to shave my head. But you did more than just giving me a haircut. You've made a difference. A couple weeks ago, it was the second year that we did it when Abby came and said, hey, Jeff, do you think we could do something to raise some money for Riley Children's Home? And I talked to Linda, and I, think, I said, I, I think we might be able to pull something off. And she said, well, I think we could put something together. And I said, I'd like to just at least have a goal of $1,000. I don't know if we got $1,000, a lot for brownies, right? A lot for some cookies, piece of cake, maybe a piece of pie, some honey. I don't know what else is out there. But it wasn't about the brownie, and it wasn't about the cake. It wasn't about any of that, was it? It was about her and her effort to make a difference in people's lives. You did that a few weeks ago when you go out to the Smile Mile, and everybody goes out, and they're seeking to make a difference. And you're singing, and you're dancing, Barbara Ann, and you are doing your thing, and you're just out there being the beautiful, incredible, lovely person that God created you to be. You're not caring about what anybody else is thinking. I'll never forget. I'll never forget this moment, but I also won't forget. I think it was your 16th birthday party. Do you remember it? We were in Mount Vernon, I believe, and you and I sang together a song. Do you remember what it was? Do you remember what it was? It's when I first introduced you to an artist that everybody in this room probably knows. Do you remember who it was? Yeah, that's right. It was she. She and I sang together karaoke. Elvis Presley's "Poke Salad Annie." I said "Poke Boom Boom Salad," right? And you told me that she was up in her room and she was singing Elvis. And it wasn't about the 16th birthday party. And it wasn't about the brownies. And it's not about the food. It's about the spirit of God that can change your life forever if you allow the blinders of everything else around you to be put away, to be put up, and that you seek to see in everything and every moment some sort of beauty. can't imagine what his eyesight saw when he first opened them. But they saw something. And his life wasn't the same ever again. And that same promise exists for each of you. It's a simple question that God asks generations ago and asks yet today. What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Maybe you don't know. Maybe you need to think about it a little bit. Maybe you need to pray about it some. But the question's not only there for someone all that time ago, it's here for you today as well. It's up to you. It's up to me. And it's up to us to continue to make incredible differences like this. Amen. Would you please sing with me as we prepare to close our gathering today? My faith has found a resting place.
Dear gracious Lord, if we came today seeing our current situation in a negative way, if we came to this place today seeing life with not as much glory or not as much brightness or not as much blessing in it, we hope that there was something today, dear Lord, that you've used through us to reach those that are feeling less than themselves. Continue to see us as vessels of your love and vessels of your hope and vessels of your optimism. Keep allowing us uh, to reach out and to be bold in that reaching out. Even if we feel like we've been kicked to the curbside, even if we feel like we've been left out, even if we feel like we've been set aside, that we would call out, seeking not only Jesus' guidance, but also a way forward. A way forward that's filled with hope. A way forward that's filled with the optimism that can only come from faith in not only ourselves, but faith in communities like this. Bless all of this food that we've gathered here today, and may it be used in some incredible ways to help families and children, whoever's in need and whoever is without. We're thankful to be able to have made a difference. We offer this prayer. We offer our worship today. We offer you our lives as we prepare to move ourselves out into the world for the next six days till we're back together again for just a short amount of time. May we come back next Sunday with all sorts of thankfulness and praise. We offer our thanks to you today with these words, when together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Lori Stahl, again for your message that I received with all of the hundreds of laughing, loudly laughing, smiling emojis. Thank you for reaching out. To all of you gathered here today, if you'd like to do something for us before you leave today, so we're talking about service beginning, we're going to need help loading up all this food. So um, if, if you're able to um, lend a hand, uh, many hands make light work of, of all of everything that needs to be moved here. With that being said, thank you all so much uh, for joining us for worship today. We hope you have an incredible week. We hope you have an awesome rest of the day. If you can join us this afternoon, that's great. May God be with you today. May God with, be with you tomorrow, and God be with you always. Our worship here at Zion Lippe United Church of Christ has ended. Let our service now begin. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.